Hi everyone, and welcome to Keep Calm and Secure Your CI/CD Pipeline. So I'm um, Sonia, I wear dark hoodies, so I'm a legit security engineer, as you can see, obviously. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to start by giving a small introduction on what is cybersecurity and why is it important. So cybersecurity is the techniques of protecting computers, networks, programs, and data from unauthorized access or attacks that are aimed for exploitation. And we can see that investment in security uh, in different companies move from nice to have to must have. Um, so if you remember, in October 2016, there was a series of uh, DDoS attacks that were launched against uh, DNS server, and actually website uh, went uh, down, like GitHub, Spotify, PayPal, Twitter, and you could have this kind of, um, uh, this is for uh, GitHub when it's down. So how this happened, actually attackers go to this kind of website, Shodan, which is basically the uh, Google form of uh, IoT. Um, they will actually um, transform machines into zombies and attack the, uh, one of their server, and then you know, the uh, server won't have any, enough bandwidth, uh, and then the, the website will go down. Do any one of you know who Dominic Tarr is? No, so Dominic Tarr uh, was the maintainer of an uh, NPM package called uh, EvenStream. So in December two uh, from last year, uh, Flatmap Stream was published to NPM and added as a dependency uh, by a user called uh, Rag9 Control. As you can see, there have been a lot of uh, downloads. So the target was actually this uh, specific Bitcoin wallet to siphon all the uh, the money on those uh, this wallet. Uh, they've actually done a little bit of social engineering on the devs. If you can see the last uh, line, if you publish a Flatmap module and then make a PR to include it, I will merge. So basically, that's what the attacker uh, has done. He's published the flatmate and then it has been merged within the, uh, the code. So since then, the, as you can see at the top, the repository has been archived by the owner. Uh, then the, actually the, the GitHub profile from the attacker has been uh, taken uh, down. But because Google is Wonderland, you can actually uh, still find it through the uh, archive. And also, usually when you push uh, code for uh, upgrading dependency, you have to put um, some sort of commits. And this is what happened when one of the dev actually <laughs> pushed a, a commit to upgrade <laughs> the dependency. Well, I show a lot of love. <laughs> okay, so now back to web app security, what is it? So web app security is a branch of uh, InfoSec that deals specifically with security of websites, web app, and web services. Uh, and we're going to actually focus on the uh, secure software development lifecycle. So basically, the S uh, DLC is a framework that defines the process used by companies to build apps, web apps, from a start to uh, the end. So this is basically, and I, I'm sure you're quite familiar with it, from uh, planning, requirement, uh, also going through design and prototyping, um, doing development, testing for QAs, and then doing the operation maintenance. But actually, you can include secu uh, security within this SDLC uh, process that will ensure uh, for each step you can have uh, pen testing, code review, and architecture analysis, threat model, all of those uh, within this uh, SDLC. So why are you doing this? Actually, because uh, it will have more secure software as security is a continuous concern for the company. Also, it will make awareness of security consideration by all the stakeholders within the company. And also, there's a cost. Er early detection of flows uh, will make a cost reduction because you don't have to fix it at the end of the chain. So, how do I get started? Actually, um, are you familiar with OWASP? Who's here familiar with OWASP? Wow, nice! <laughs> it's the first time actually that I have so many people. Uh, so, basically, for those who don't know, it's the Open Web App Security Project. It's a community de dedicated to uh, actually create uh, those kind of uh, documentation. Uh, so complete books on app security testing, secure code development, and secure code review. Everything is free. I really strongly, uh, strongly recommend you to go on the website and download uh, the PDF. This is the website. So I'm going to focus on those three, uh, the OS Top 10, the uh, OS Pro Active Controls, and the OS ASVS. So the OS Pro uh, Proactive Control is a list of security techniques that should be included in every software development project. So this is just to give you an idea of the uh, top 10 proactive controls. Uh, so the first one is define security requirements. Uh, basically, uh, it, it might be like a, list, a checklist. So I'll present you the ASVS later. But just to give you an idea, because you might be use, uh, using user stories, you can also use abuse cases. This is an example for broken authentication. For example, instead of as a user, you can do as an, an attacker. On the, um, you switch the, the point of view, actually. 
Uh, the other one would be, uh, C2 would be leverage security frameworks. So basically don't reinvent the wheel, just use the uh, frameworks that are already there because they're already secure. Uh, so for example, uh, after the React one is, if you go on the GitHub repo, you would see that there's a lot of stars. Uh, you, you can see that it has been pushed uh, quite a lot. Uh, there's a lot of commits uh, and a lot of contributors. So this is actually showing that uh, that framework is, um, is, is maintained, so quite secure. The same, you can go on the NPM registry and you can see the weekly downloads is almost 6, in just a, uh, 6 million sorry, in uh, just a week. Uh, so for the OS top 10, I think probably developers are most uh, familiar with uh, that uh, OS top 10 um, vulnerability. So those are the one, um, because they're usually um, issued those every uh, three, four years. The last time they issued it was in 2017. As you can see now, they didn't change that much. It's actually the same vulnerabilities within uh, a web application. And then the last one in terms of uh, SVS, this is application security uh, verification standards. It's basically a checklist for everything uh, concerning authentication, session management, API, web services. And this is an example of uh, one of the uh, checklists that you could see. And the first one is verify the use of a secure SDLC that address security in all stages of development. So now I'm going to see, um, show you how uh, in Pride in London, uh, we're actually um, created for an open source, a complete CI CD pipeline. Uh, for those who are interested in open source, uh, GitHub is organizing Open Source Friday, and also you have uh, Octoberfest. I think you have to do like three pull requests and then you get um, a free t-shirt. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Pride in London is uh, an open source project. Uh, this will be the, uh, the website uh, this summer. And basically this is a stack that we're uh, using. Uh, so we're using Gatsby as a main framework. We're fetching the data from uh, Contentful uh, as the CMS and we're hosting on Ethify. Uh, we're doing continuous integration uh, through a Circle CI. Uh, we're using the, um, like the dozen of tools in the middle. Uh, this is for accessibility, code quality, code review and security. Uh, everything is linked to uh, Slack, GitHub, and uh, emails, and we're doing a little bit of monitoring with Rollbar. So you can find all of those tools on GitHub Marketplace. So basically, uh, GitHub Marketplace has been here for uh, two years and has around 50 uh, tools. Uh, and it's all free for open source. If you have any side project or a test task when you're applying to job, you can just um, add those tools. So we're using Circle CI for the continuous integration. So it will show us through the branches which build, fails, or pass. Uh, basically, it's just it's, it's simple. Like you're, you're going to spin up the uh, the environment. It'll check install the um, npm packages or save it, uh, and then they will uh, trigger uh, depending the uh, yarn task like yarn lint or yarn test. So this is the uh, the YAML file, the configuration. Uh, so we'll spin a Docker image uh, to actually trigger all those uh, tasks. And this is where we're uh, also hosting the environment variables. We're using access link for uh, accessibility. So I actually took the screenshot to show you that also those tools can uh, trigger false positive. As you can see, this is a test file and it actually say that it's missing an alt attribute, which doesn't really make sense in this case. But it's always good that it's actually flagging for, uh, uh, in this case, was accessibility. Uh, for code coverage, we're using code cob. So it's the same. Um, it will actually scan uh, every commit and every push request uh, and give you an idea of, um, uh, give you the delta if it's, in it's increasing or decreasing um, regarding of the, uh, the branch. And it will actually uh, integrate this uh, report within the PR, so you can see um, really easily uh, how you're doing in terms of coverage for the unit testing. Uh, in terms of code quality, we're using Codacy. We're actually using two, three uh, tools for uh, code quality and code, um, and code review. So uh, this one, at first, you can see that actually the, the graph is like dropping like mad. Uh, so what I've done is actually turn on all the code patterns. This is actually what you have to do with those tool. At first, you have to set on uh, all the, the tools and uh, the rules, sorry, and then you will fine tune um, the, uh, the rules because some of the rules are not relevant for your uh, project, like indentation. You might actually discuss this within your team. Um, yeah, and they will also give you, uh, if you do a PR, if it's actually up to standards or not, and actually tell you which line is, uh, is wrong. And, uh, 
So we're also using uh, CodeBit, it's quite the same, but uh, instead of using Greg, they're using a GPA. And they're also, the, the good thing with uh, CodeBit, they're giving you quick wins if you want to improve your, your grade. Uh, we're also using uh, CodeFactor. So it's quite the same, they will give you a hotspot and the libraries that you're using and the, uh, the code coverage on it. Uh, in terms of security, this uh, LGTM is a mix between code quality and security. Uh, and they say also defend and prevent zero day. I'm quite curious on that one, <laughs> actually. Uh, so it's the same, it'll just give you a cool uh, heat map and buy uh, commits and PR. Um, also, if, you're, if you have some code smell, they will actually take the, the snippet of code uh, and the developer can actually um, check and have more information uh, and some recommendation. And also, as you can see at the bottom, there's a reference to uh, the official documentation. This, so th in this example, it's uh, React. And also, you can compare your project with uh, the other project that are using LGTM. So the, the little uh, green dot is our project, Brian London, compared to uh, Microsoft Azure. <laughs> Um, in terms of uh, flagging dependencies, we're using Sonotype DevShield. This one is a little bit intense because it's using the CVSS. So for those of you who are curious how the CVSS are calculated, so for example, 7.4 uh, critical, this is actually the matrix that they're using uh, to get this uh, score in terms of complexity, the scope, and the impact of the, uh, this vulnerability. If you want sim uh, something simpler, uh, I would recommend the Pandabot because the Pandabot will actually uh, raise um, a PR automatically. Uh, and they will also give you the compatibility uh, score, as you can see, which means that they will compare with diff different companies who has already merged uh, this PR and there's no issues in their CICD pipeline. So it gives you a little bit more also um, uh, confidence in merging this, uh, this PR. There's also Snake, probably you're more familiar with Snake for a dependency check. So the same, they will actually uh, scan your package JSON because this is a JavaScript um, project. Uh, so depending, it will also uh, check your Gradle or Marvel or Maven or uh, requirements.txt, depending on the language that you're using. And they will flag if you have any vulnerability and give you some remediation. Uh, also, there's integration through uh, Slack. And if you're wondering how the integration through Slack is done, it's actually all the tools are integrated through webhooks. Uh, so it's quite easy because you usually have an integration tab within those tools and then it's, uh, you just have to copy paste the, the webhook. It's quite straightforward to install. And they also send you uh, emails notification to let you know if you have any uh, issues. Uh, for monitoring, we're using Rollbar. So basically, it's a reporting and debugging tools for a developer. This is used when you push live your, uh, your website, and they will actually show you is there, if there are any um, issues uh, on live. So this is how it looks uh, when you raise a PR. You can see in the middle, you have the uh, code curve report. We're also using uh, pull request size, which is quite, um, we I find it quite good, this one. Uh, so you can see the label, like the size slash M at the middle. It gives you the size of the, uh, the PR. So this is what it looks like when all the check pass. Usually you don't have this the first run. Usually it more looks like this. There's like some checks failing. Um, <laughs> Um, also, what we've done, we've actually blocked the PR with uh, at least one rev uh, approving review. And this is what happened when all the uh, 10 tools passed, like we're really happy, everyone in the team is celebrating. <laughs> um, this is an ad another example of uh, the message that we can uh, get on uh, Slack. For hosting, we're using uh, Netlify. So also, this is an another example of everything is linked through uh, Slack. So it gives us actually confidence uh, into merging pushing. Because at first, when we've started this open source project, we didn't have visibility at all. And we've been implementing those tools uh, one by one, and it, gives, it gave us more confidence. So uh, on the readme file, now we can have all those badges, which looks cool, especially when everything is green. <laughs> So you can see Netlify for hosting the, um, the Circle CI. Uh, third line is for uh, code review and code quality. 
Uh, LGTM is the fourth one, uh, code coverage, and the last one is SNCC. So hopefully we'll have everything green. Uh, in terms of product management, uh, just to give you an example, because we're trying to uh, use uh, GitHub as much as we can. So we've actually established um, some uh, labels and epics. Well, they call it milestones on uh, GitHub, but it's quite the same as epic, and then you can group uh, tickets through labels and you can filter and sort it. Uh, and we're also using an automated uh, Kanban uh, at Prime London. So it's quite cool because when you actually do some review or closing, it actually moves by itself. You don't have to touch the ticket and move the tickets. So what's next? So this is actually great, but we have to go to different dashboards with all the tools. So we're actually looking, and we're actually raised uh, a spike. We're actually looking to move to GitLab because for open source, um, one of their plans is actually free with all those uh, goodies. So we're actually thinking about moving to, uh, to GitLab because all of the tools are actually built in uh, within GitLab. So what would be next for you? Um, probably be, uh, become a security champion if everything that I mentioned uh, is interesting uh, for you. So basically a security champion is um, what is it? It's, bridge, it's a person that will bridge between developers and security, because usually in the company you, you have like a small uh, security team, uh, and then a security champion can go to the different Scrum or Agile uh, meetings, and then feed back to the security. And obviously it's not only developers, it could be designer, product owner, like everyone in the team can be uh, security champions and secure aware. Uh, for those who are uh, also interested are um, how to get into the cybersecurity industry, I wrote an article on Medium and uh, LinkedIn, if you want, just have a, have a read. Also, I would recommend um, those meetups. Uh, so if you're a woman or you're identified as a woman, I would strongly recommend Ladies of London Hacking Society and OASP Women in uh, AppSec, and also the OASP London chapter. Uh, and I will finish by get secure, be secure, and stay secure. Thank you.